Today, I'm going to talk about the alternative pathway of the complement system. So earlier we talked about the classical pathway of complement system and in that particular pathway we came across many things like complement one, two and so on. But in this particular pathway we will see something else. The manner in which this particular pathway proceed is a bit different from the classical pathway. So we will focus on the alternative pathway. Now again, I am taking the help of some number. Here you can see one, four, two, three and so on. This number looks quite familiar because in the last lecture in the classical pathway of complement system, we came across this number which begins with one, four, two, three and so on and then the order is perfect. Now this means that the classical pathway starts with the complement one C1 and then comes C4. But in case of alternative pathway, things are quite different because in this particular pathway, there isn't any need of antigen antibody complex. So there isn't any C1. It don't even have any involvement of complement four and two as well. So it directly begins with the complement three or C3. As you can see on your screen, you can see complement three here and this complement three will spontaneously break down into two subunits which are C3A and C3B as you can see on your screen. So there is a difference between classical and alternative pathway. It directly begins with this and C3 breaks down with the help of the process known as hydrolysis and due to the hydrolysis it will cleave or convert itself into a bigger subunit C3B and a smaller subunit C3A. Now comes the next phase. They will drift apart and after drifting apart, we know that most of the A subunits, they act as the anaphylotoxins. So A for A unit or A smaller unit and A for anaphylotoxins. But these B subunits, they are somehow involved in the breakdown of anything else, something else. So they are involved in the breakdown of something else. So B for B unit or B for breakdown or breakers. So now with the help of a bond, it will bind itself to the surface of pathogen. Now, as I told you in the last pathway that this particular thing here, it's a bacteria or any pathogen, bacterial molecule or bacterial pathogen. And this particular bacteria has the surface. You can see the lipid bilayer and C3B will attach itself to this particular surface so that in future it can either create a pore within the structure of this bacteria or the layer of this bacteria or it can go for another option which is opsonization. So next thing, if we talk about the next thing, here you can see another protein. This is factor B. Now in this particular case, this factor B will come close to this C3B, the bigger unit of C3, and then with the help of another factor, factor D, it will cleave itself into two portions, which are, you know, the bigger portion would be called BB or capital B small B in this case, and other one would be BA, the smaller portion. And again, like all the smaller portions, like all the A subunits, it will drift apart in this manner. So now what we have here is the union or complex between C3B and the bigger unit of B factor, capital B and small b. So now this complex is not stable. It is not stabilized unit. So to stabilize it, another protein comes into action. As you can see, this particular protein is known as properdin and this protein is there to stabilize the complex or the union between these two things which are shown in yellow and blue color. Without this properdin, these two things were not stable. The union between the two things was not stabilized. So properdin came and gave strength to this complex and ultimately it stabilized the whole complex. Now this complex is ready to perform its duty. This complex is quite like 
the complex that was involved in the case of classical pathway, which was the union between C4B and C2B. And uh, we know that this particular thing was known as C3 convertase. Why? So because it had the ability to convert C3 into the two subunits, bigger and smaller subunits. Quite similarly, now this stabilized structure or complex has the ability to convert C3 into the respective subunits, the bigger and the smaller subunit. But this particular thing was known as C3 convertase in the case of classical pathway. Quite similarly, this particular thing would be called as the C3 convertase of alternative pathway. Now this C3 will come close to this structure. It will act as a substrate for this whole complex and it will be broken down into two portions as you can see on your screen. And again, one will drift away, the smaller portion will drift away while the bigger portion will again attach itself to the surface of bacteria and again it will repeat the same cycle. Another bee will come into action. It will come close to this particular thing and then the same cycle goes on. It will be broken down into two portions and ultimately it will be stabilized by this properdin. And this cycle is repeated many times and a lot of C3B will accumulate on the surface of this particular bacteria and ultimately we know that when a lot of C3B accumulates on the surface of any particular pathogen or bacteria, it's a signal for the macrophages. They will come into action. They will come close to this particular pathogen and they will engulf it. And that particular process is known as opsonization. And they will engulf the bacteria by the process of phagocytosis. And the whole phenomena is known as opsonization. So I hope this concept is clear to you. Now, it also has another option. As in the beginning, I told you that Apart from opsonization, it can also create pore within the body or within the structure of this particular bacteria. So let's move towards that particular thing. Now you can see these two things will unite and they will be strengthened or stabilized by properdin, which is not shown here by the way. But then it also has another option. It can bind with another C3B to form this whole complex starting from C3B and ending at C3B. And now this complex has the ability to convert, cleave, break C5 into its constituents, bigger subunits C5B and smaller subunits C5A. The smaller portion will drift apart. As this whole structure here had the ability to break, convert C5 into its respective subunits, that's why this whole complex is known as C5 convertase. So this is the C5 convertase of the alternative pathway. And then from here onwards, things are pretty simpler. Things are pretty easy. Now, this C5B will start recruiting other complements in the ascending order or in the increasing manner. Now, at first, we have this C6 complement and then comes C7 and C8. Now, this C7 and C8, they are embedded deep down the membrane as you can see on your screen. Why so? Because they have this unique hydrophobic region that allows it to embed deep down the membrane. So, they penetrate deep down the membrane and then they have the ability to recruit lots of C9 and a lots of C9 will come to the spot and they will unite with each other to form a whole complex, a channel, a water channel, or we can also call it pore, or in other words, we can also say that it's a hole within the membrane of pathogen. And this particular channel, once it has been created, it will allow the movement of water from one area to other area or to the intracellular space of bacteria. Water will start accumulating within the bacteria and it will exert certain pressure and there reaches a stage when it won't be tolerable for the bacteria and it will burst. Now, not only water is moving, other things are moving as well. There are certain ions that can move across this particular channel or the C9 polymeric unit. And due to these kind of movements, due to the movement of water and ions, osmotic imbalance would be created. That would ultimately be responsible for the breakdown or rupture of the whole bacterial cell because it will compromise the overall integrity of the bacterial cell and it will ultimately burst and it will be ultimately eliminated or killed. So that is the whole phenomena of the process of creating a pore within the body of bacteria. Now let's look at a better picture. Here you can see 
a complex. It is starting from C5 and ending at C9. So starting from C5B ending at C9, this whole complex is known as MAC, M-A-C, or in simple words, it is the membrane attack complex. As the name suggests, this pore, this channel is created within the cell membrane. And due to the formation of this channel or pore, our body was able to attack the pathogen or the pathogen or bacteria was attacked and was eliminated or killed. That's why this whole complex is named as membrane attack complex. So I hope this point is clear. And as I have told you before that C7 and C8, you can see C8 here as well. C8 is embedded or C7 is embedded deep down the cell membrane. So both these things, C7 and C8, they are embedded deep down the membrane due to their unique hydrophobic region. So that was the whole idea behind the membrane attack complex. Now let's quickly summarize the whole process. Now we know that C3 in this alternative pathway spontaneously breaks down into its constituents subunits, which are the smaller C3A and bigger C3B. And then comes another factor, which is known as the factor B. Now this factor is not spontaneously cleaved. It is cleaved with the help of another factor, which is factor D. Factor D will come into action and it will act on the factor B and it will break break factor B into the smaller and the bigger subunit. Bigger subunit being capital B small b and smaller subunit being capital B small a. Now bigger subunits from both these things C3 and B factor they will come close to each other and they will form a union. They will form a complex as you can see on your screen. Now this complex is not stable and it will be further stabilized or strengthened by another factor or protein which is known as properdin which is not shown here by the way and that particular stabilized structure has the ability to cleave c3 or it can act on another c3 and it will ultimately break down c3 into c3a smaller unit and c3b the bigger unit so the whole process started with c3 the breakdown of c3 spontaneously and it also ended in another breakdown of this particle now if this process continues it will continue this process will continue and a lot of c3b will accumulate on the surface of bacteria and it would be the signal for the macrophages to come and perform their duty they will come into Action and they will then perform their duty of phagocytosis and they will engulf the bacteria and kill it, eliminate it. But here is another option for this union. Earlier in the case of classical pathway, we were calling C4B and C2B, the C3 converters. But in the case of alternative pathway, this union here is acting or behaving as C3 converters. So if this particular union will combine with another C3B, now this union has the ability or this complex here has the ability to cleave C5 into its constituent subunits, the bigger and the smaller subunit as you can see on your screen. As this particular union had the ability to cleave or convert C5 into these two subunits, that's why this particular union is known as C5 convertase. And then the things are pretty easier from here onwards that it will start recruiting. The C5B will start recruiting other things like C6, C7, C8 and ultimately or finally we have the combination of a lots of C9s to form a channel and that will cause the movement of two things or two or more things, the ions as well as the water or the fluids. And ultimately the bacteria would be eliminated because of the osmotic imbalance because it won't be tolerable for the bacteria. A lot of water will accumulate within the body of the bacteria and it will exert pressure and ultimately it will rupture or it will break down and this process would be termed as lysis. So I hope you got this idea. This was the whole idea behind the concept of alternative pathway. Thank you for listening and thank you for your patience.